Hi, I'm Christy Urban and Johnson. I want to welcome you to this morning's edition of Refresh, where I hope that your heart will be refreshed today. I'm going to the scripture in Matthew 1. Um, this passage really encouraged me recently. I've been going through a lot with our ministry and trying to make decisions, really reasoning out in my mind what I should do. And my biggest fear, and it's not just lately, as I look over the last 10 years that I've been in ministry, my biggest fear is that I'm going to make a mistake. So many times my prayers are, God, show me what to do. Show me what to do. And sometimes I don't hear anything. And I don't know which direction to go. And as I step out, I'm so afraid that I'm going to mess this thing up. And God knew I was struggling with this recently. And I started reading in Matthew. And I was reading the Christmas story. And I want to pick up where, where it's the birth of Jesus. It's Matthew 1. Verse 18, it says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place under these circumstances. When his mother Mary had been promised in marriage to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. So you got Joseph, he's getting married eventually to uh, Mary. They're engaged. And he finds out that Mary's going to have a baby. Well, this is a problem because... They hadn't been together sexually. So he knew the child was not his. And obviously, man would reason out that his wife must have been having some um, extra dating activities on the side. So Joseph is home, or wherever he is, and he's trying to figure out, Lord, what do I do? And I believe that he's seeking the Lord's guidance on this. It says her husband, her promised husband, Joseph, being a just and upright man. To me, this is referring to his heart for Christ, that he is a godly man not willing to expose her publicly and to shame and disgrace her. That in itself shows what an incredible man he was. Can you imagine finding out and thinking that your wife had been cheat your wife to be has been cheating on you? He wasn't going, she could have been stoned. He wasn't taking her to the courts to have her put to death, which he could have. He loved her and he wanted to do the just and upright thing and divorce her quietly because back then, if you were engaged, it was like being legally married and he would have to go through a divorce process. But as he was thinking this over, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, and he said, Joseph, descendant of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her, that which is in her belly, that baby, is from the Holy Spirit. It's of God, he says. She will bear a son, and you will call his name Jesus, and that means he will save his people from their sin. All this took place that it might be fulfilled which the Lord has spoken through the prophets. Joseph, being aroused from his sleep, it says in verse 24, did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him. And he took her to be with his wife. And then it says, but he did not have union with her until after the baby was born. How this encouraged me is that I was really trying to figure out and reason in my mind what to do, what decisions to make, where we should do this particular ministry, and when, and who should be involved. Just like Joseph here, he was trying to figure out what to do. And when he figured out what to do and he was moving forward, what encouraged me is that God stopped him. And God said, Joseph, don't follow through with your plans. Trust me in this. I know it doesn't make sense. I know this isn't what you intended, what you wanted, but trust that I have a plan and a purpose for your life. This is of me. What's conceived in her is what's of me. And you can trust me. And I love Joseph's heart. This shows that he's a just and upright man because he trusted God and he obeyed God. He didn't divorce her. He didn't follow through with his plans that made sense to him, but yet he followed through with God's plans that didn't make any sense. And there was a lot of consequences with this action. I'm sure there's a lot of rejection, a lot of gossip in the town, a lot of confusion, but he trusted God and he moved forward. I was so encouraged because I realized as I have a relationship with the Lord, He promises in Proverbs that if I acknowledge Him, if I make Him Lord of my life, that He will direct my footsteps. He will not let me be led astray. It says in the Bible, in the Old Testament, you will hear a voice to the left or to the right. That is the way you should go and you walk in it. Joseph heard the voice of God, told him the direction to go, and he walked with it. I've been so afraid to step out sometimes because I don't know for sure. And I believe we're not to know all the answers. That's where faith comes in. We step out. We use the wisdom that God's given us. We back it with the Word of God and the discernment. 
And then we move out and we trust that if it's not of him, he will redirect our footsteps, just like he did for Joseph, just like he did for the Magi in in chapter 2. They were going to go back to King Herod and God stopped them right in their tracks and says, no, you're going to go this direction. God stopped Paul in the, old, in the New Testament and Paul was going to go and he says, no, the Holy Spirit prevented us from going to where we thought we should go. So we can be encouraged by the passages to know that if we've got things going on in our life, as long as we have a heart that's willing to be redirected, we've got a heart that's open to hearing from the Lord We line up our footsteps with the Word of God to the best of our ability that as we step out, if it's not the direction of God, He'll stop us. And really as I look back over the last 10 years of our ministry and even in my life when I've been trying to make decisions, I can see over and over again that the places that I almost made a mistake, God stopped me. And even where I did make mistakes, when I got back on track with the Lord and sought His face, He fixed it for me. There was consequences at times, but he always worked things out for good because I was called according to his purposes. So I encourage you today to get off the dock, quit trying to figure, quit being in fear that you're going to screw up. Champions aren't people who never screw up. Champions are people who step out, keep persevering in faith, and God will bless those footsteps. May the Lord encourage you and bless you today on your journey.